news, some news. My name is Mike B, a.k.a. Phony. Today's date is uh, February 18th, 2022. I had to check that also. Wow. The time is 4.15. Oh, we should have waited five minutes. God damn, we got to do it again. No, I'm just kidding. Welcome. <clears throat> welcome, welcome, welcome. Halt. Stop everything. Do over. Welcome. Today, we have a show for you. Not a lot of NFT stuff. As a matter of fact, I don't think we have any NFT stuff. I've noticed that there seems to be a lot of, a lot, there's still, there's still companies that are like trying to test the waters, like Team 17. They were like, oh, we got this really cool concept with worms. They had a worms profile picture NFT, right? And they were going to drop those. And then within like 24 hours, they were like, nah, okay, wow, we fucked up. And then they stepped away. And that's been happening like across the board for a lot of companies. Now, in some cases, we've had some, like I think maybe Ubisoft or someone was like, listen, I think it was Ubisoft as a matter of fact, listen, the players, they don't know what they want, right? They don't really know what they want. They don't understand this yet, but they will like it. Maybe just bad timing. They don't get it. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's a lot. A lot of the counter discussion around NFTs is, is all about that, right? It's like, oh, so you don't like NFTs? Cool. Let's have a discussion. Here's all the reasons why NFTs are awesome. And it's like, no, we understand all that. That's all the reasons why we don't like them. <laughs> it's because we don't. No. no. Yeah, they figured out no one wants to buy realistic stuff. Yeah, they, they found out that nobody wants to be the bigger sucker. Really? Yeah, he was like, I ain't gonna I get your games. Just a sheer level of misunderstanding of NFTs. Yeah. Is there a LeBron crypto commercial? That's all you can think of? Wait, was there a LeBron crypto commercial? Was that during the Super Bowl? We did have the Super Bowl, by the way. And we had one crypto commercial, I think. Uh, no, we had, no, we had more than one crypto commercial. Oh, God, who was in it? There was somebody in this one. I can't remember, but... <clears throat> the big game? Yeah. Oh, that's right. The QR code for Coinbase. Yeah. The, the DVD, like, doop, doop, QR code. That was silly. Uh, <laughs> that's right. Larry David. That's right. That's right. Larry David. They were trying to, they're trying to say, like, all of our greatest advancements in technology as a human race were always met with criticism in the beginning and naysayers and doubters and people who don't like change, like Larry David. <laughs> and then they're and then and then they connect it over and they say and here's and here's cryptocurrency whatever and then they're like don't be like larry david or something like because larry david was like nah i'm not into that and then that was it and i was what the fuck <laughs> yeah they did him dirty man they did him dirty uh elba lebron and matt damon can all go live all go live on elysium elba it is elba he wasn't uh he wasn't in a commercial he was in a commercial of booking.com I remember that because I saw his face and I was like, oh shit, it's Idris Elba really going to be part of NFTs and all that shit. And I was a little upset. And then it was, I saw his shirt, it said booking.com. And then I was still, even then I had doubts. Even then I was like, what What if he just really likes that sweater? Yeah. <laughs> what if he really just likes that sweater? And this is like, this is like a Doge commercial or something like that. No, I say Doge because I still support Doge. But... <laughs> But still, uh, Melania Trump launches a third NFT collection is in the news. Really? Is she going to buy this one also? <laughs> because she bought the last one. Get it? <laughs> oh, it's so easily traceable. Um, <clears throat> anyways, did she really? <laughs> yeah, what does Larry David know? He only made one of the most successful TV shows. He doesn't know shit, man. Um, anyways, we're doing news today. No NFT news this week. guys. right. Thank you. Thank you. Crime. Fuck. <laughs> Anyways, 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 so, 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 um, I've been following this story for a little bit. Steve Burke, some of y'all know him as Tech Jesus, some of y'all know him as Gamers Nexus, had a bit of a run-in with Newegg, a bit of a skerfuffle. Is it skerfuffle or skerfuffle? I think it's skerfuffle. I'm not sure. With Newegg. New egg looking pretty bad. Looking pretty bad on this one. It involves a motherboard that they purchased, and then when they received it, they didn't need it. It is kerfuffle. Thank you. I figured it was. 
People don't use those kind of words anymore. It's a good one too. She uses it more often. Uh, wait, is it two R's? Uh, <laughs> I'll look that up before I put it in the title of the video today, right? Um, one R. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, a $600 USD used motherboard. They did not open the box because when they received the package, it was not needed anymore. They were like, oh, shit, we don't need it. 30-day hassle-free. 30-day 30 30 hassle-free return. He wrote in the note, I just didn't need it. I love you guys. I buy shit here all the time. He didn't write that part, but that's true. Uh, and then they reject his RMA. So they rejected his RMA and he ends up getting the board back and he opens it up and this is what he sees. Why'd you sell this to me? What's your fucking problem, new egg? All right. So bent pins on the CPU. Now, you don't have to know shit about shit to know that's probably not good. <laughs> probably. <laughs> I don't know what belongs to those pins, but I'm pretty sure they don't design CPUs with like, ah, you could get away with three or four being burnt. No problem. Or bents. No problem. Inferno, stay with me. Stay with me, man. Stay with me. It was fuck. That's fucking painful. Yeah, this is painful. It was a typo. It's, it's not hassle free. It's free hassle. That's right. Just smoosh it in. I don't know how that happens. I've seen like, a smear of, 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 a, a, like a smear of pins, but not like individual ones like this. This is like somebody dropped something on it. So I have no idea. Uh, new detachable CPU, yeah, new detachable CPU pins. Uh, <clears throat> so they rejected it because of this. And so he gets it back and he's like, wow, it's con content time. <laughs> and he calls them back and they were, they, and, and he called back their support and they say, says that the motherboard pins were damaged. Right, yeah, I, I, um, so not only did I not open the motherboard box, I didn't even open the shipping box. I just put two, you know, pieces of new tape on it on top of the old ones, never opened it. And it was very cool. And they just didn't honor it. Now, he didn't, he didn't call necessarily and say, hey, I'm a super big YouTuber and you guys are fucked if you don't support me on this. But he did take the Twitter and start, obviously he posted his video, initial video, uh, which, as you can imagine, with the following that he has, generated a bit of, uh, generated response from Newegg. And <clears throat> he told Newegg, basically, to stuff it. He says, Newegg didn't help us when we called them for support. We posted a video and like magic, Newegg starts spam calling us. Sorry, Newegg, you get the same treatment we did. Our phone reps are busy and we'll get back to it if we feel like it. Just like your policy. So he decides to dig a little bit further into the uh, into the reason why it was uh, um, uh, bent. And he didn't have to dig very far because, because after some very because right on the unit itself is an RMA sticker from Gigabyte that Newegg did not even remove. And it still had the sender's information on it. So this sender, we would assume, would probably be like a customer or it would be something else. And so what he does, he digs. Very simple digging. We found out that the RMA customer is Newegg. That's the really interesting part. Specifically, the customer is Magnal Associates. And looking up... Magnal Associates did point towards pretty high confidence that it was Newegg. Uh, and then we just looked at basic corporate filings and found out it is, in fact, Newegg. So we talked to some companies in the industry. So he finds out there are tons of people going through this. Like, this is not an isolated issue. Tons of people are dealing with this shit from these guys, from Newegg. And his approach, his respectable approach is... Listen, I'm not trying to bury Newegg. We need competition in this market. We can't have just Amazon and that's it. We can't just have Amazon. So <clears throat> he calls, there's other sections of the video, but instead of playing the whole video for you guys, I'll just summarize it. Uh, he calls them pretending to be a buyer, right? He bought like a lot, like a, uh, like a, a bulk shipment. Uh, and he, that's where he got more information about this, uh, about this return, this RMA. And he discovers that the RMA was sent, you know, 
by Newegg, essentially, by that by that company, uh, and they want to charge him a hundred bucks. So they got back. So basically, Newegg got back the RMA or got back the yeah the return from the from a gigabyte, and they said you you have to pay a hundred dollars or you know it's trash basically. And instead of throwing in the trash or paying a hundred dollars, they just slapped an open box sticker on it and shipped it right on out. Now Newegg's policy does say that um, open box items will probably just not work. It probably won't come up with everything you need. It's probably not worth purchasing. It does say all that. Complete bullshit. <laughs> when it comes with bent pins, with bent fucking pins, uh, they always use stuff from Amazon. Told, uh, sold to me as new by Amazon sells and uh, that I've had to return. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so he he devises a plan. He already had a trip set up to go to California. Uh, that's here, and uh, to go to uh, go do something else, right? And he decided, you know what? I'm just gonna go to Newegg, and they can uh, they can meet me outside if they want, and we could talk, or we could just whatever. <laughs> what it says here, we just book a flight to California to visit Newegg this week. We have informed Newegg that we will be arriving at their doorstep with cameras, and that this is the company's opportunity to have a discussion. We're just letting you all know in case they put the PR spin out. Uh, open box includes just playing broken hardware now. That's a yeah, basically, basically, yeah. So. I was hoping this whole thing would be resolved by now. He did put out a video follow-up saying where he was, he's there. Uh, he was in his hotel. They did agree to um, to uh, to have a discussion with him. And in a tweet about an hour ago, they did meet with Newegg. And it says, we met with Newegg on Thursday. We have mixed feelings on the meeting overall, but the executive team we met with did take a lot of notes. This is a great step and one and was one of our requests we brought on behalf of the community comments. So they did listen. More to come. Uh, so it says return policy update. This was this is a tweet that was a result. This came out basically the same time that they um, had had their meeting. Uh, and so it says a return policy update. We have extended our hassle free return policy to now include all open box product categories. Any customer who feels they have an unresolved returns issue can email our new dedicated escalation email inbox at returns issue at newig dot com. So. Right now, we don't have a solution. I have a, re a resolution to this. Right now, we don't know. Personally, I don't want to see New Egg go under. As much as New Egg has been shit in the bed, we have other articles from other people. I have. A, I have a, let me read this TLDR from uh, from Wovie. Wovie breaks this down pretty nicely. Um, there's another video <clears throat> that other people are releasing with their own issues. Uh, this one. The uh, is Newegg doesn't want you to see these messages, and it says his uh, it says the TLDR is that they owed him money for the videos and owed a prize winner a CPU that hadn't given and hadn't given either of after, after either of them that after like two years or so he brought it up in a video and suddenly got bribed by Newegg, uh, and it says this is a follow up video about his communication with said briber and yeah it's all fucking horrible mess. Thank you so much again, Woofy, for that summary. Um, there's other other videos that are popping up. Some of them a little meta. Right, it's, it it stops being about New Egg and starts being about the people, the other YouTubers that are impacted by this. <laughs> Was this YouTuber scammed by New Egg? And it's like, well, we should just watch the original video. <laughs> Saw that bit too. It's bad. It's bad. It's bad. Uh, yeah, you, you, New Egg used to be amazing. <sighs> you know, I don't want to see New Egg go under. Right. Just like I didn't want to see CompUSA or Circuit City or Ultimate Electronics or Good Guys or Tower Records or any of these other companies going under. But when you deal in an industry that has low margins and a very competitive online market, you start to see shit like this. You start to see shit like what Newegg's doing. They they almost almost have to do this out of necessity in order to continue being operational because they're not like Amazon. That had his fingers in literally everything so that whenever one side falters a little bit because maybe there's a few too many returns on something, the other side of the business can pick up the slack. See, I stopped using Newegg after buying memory from them. As turned out, it's not compatible with your PC. I returned in, I had to pay some stupid Rosaki fee, and Amazon was so much better. <sighs> See, that's the thing. Oh, they should just take it. 30 day hassle free. That's what it says, right? Uh, Paul's Hyder put out a video too. That's right. He gives insider info on Newegg since he uses, uh, used to work at the RMA. Uh, in the RMA department. Yeah. And like, and it's not the same, but we use RMA shit all the time to 
you know, from CompUSA. We would get something, we'd just RMA it, and no big deal, whatever. We'd RMA everything from uh, package was slightly, you know, damaged, and the customer returned it, uh, shit like that. But we never received a product that was like trash, and we're like, yeah, we'll put it out and uh, put it out and sell it because we were a brick and mortar school, store. So if we sold it to somebody and it was trash, they would just bring it right back, and then we'd have to deal with them in person. But with an online presence. There is no personal anything. You could just ignore their emails. You could just send them to voicemail. You could just pretend they don't exist. You can't do that with a brick and mortar, right? And I'm not I'm not advocating for brick and mortar to come back or anything. I'm just saying like this is the way that companies are conducting themselves because conducting themselves in a way that's more truth that that is more honest is going to cost them more money. So of course they're gonna take things and oh yeah, slap them and they send it out, whatever. Maybe not as a corporate decision, right? It's not an executive decision or anything to like, oh, let's just go ahead and slap some, uh, you know, busted ass, you know, pins uh, uh, in a box and throw it out and, and send it out to the customer and let them deal with it and we'll just reject it later. That's not like a business practice. That's more than likely just somebody in the RMA department that has numbers they have to me- they have to meet, right? A certain number of products cannot be like or, or they cannot be destroyed or whatever because something else. I don't know if it's mentioned in the RMA video, but something else uh, that happens is. Whenever we do an RMA to a company and they don't want to pay for the shipping or they don't or they have a policy of just like destroy, we'll RMA something and we'll destroy perfectly good products because that's the policy. So it's entirely possible that there's an RMA manager or something in there that's just like, yeah, looking at his metrics and just saying, let's just instead of destroying this, let's just send it out to the next customer and then go from there. Uh and so, yeah, I don't think this is a corporate decision on their part. This is this is influenced by corporate decisions. Metrics are too strict. Goes down the pipeline. If you have too many things that are being made destroyed, you're losing the company money. They replace you with somebody else that's going to do it. Um, you know, they're a lemon board, and I was at the point of dealing with it that I told the guy point blank, I want a new board, not this one, or a replacement of it. A lemon board? Oh, oh, you went through. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a struggling small company that's having a rough pandemic. I can understand a business practice, but um, if it all just goes to corporate profits, it's just terrible. Well, all of it, all of it always goes to corporate profits. Bezos seeing New Egg fucking up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Man, oh man. And if you look at this thread, the thread is just packed with people putting in their own stories, their own stories about, you know, uh, <clears throat> you know, state returns and stuff that, uh, what the hell? <laughs> Returns that didn't that didn't necessarily go correctly, right? That were um, pushed off by by uh, New Egg despite being faulty products. So, and the threads threads are full of them. But right now, as it stands, we have to wait until they get their video edited so we can see how the actual thing went. But what we should expect is that the policy at least is updated. So that includes open box. That's a good first step. And whether or not they actually follow through with it instead of just, oh yeah, send us an email and then not checking it <sighs> remains to be seen. There's a bunch of other options in the UK. You guys only have two for components. For us, it depends on where you live. Uh, we have across the US, we have a number of different places, but a lot of it's regional. Uh, here, we just have Best Buy. That's it. <laughs> Fries is gone. Micro Center is gone. We just have Best Buy. There's like a tiny little computer store in like San Jose somewhere that that Donna Savanas knows about and no one else. <laughs> it's it's there's a lot. I mean there's it's it's just there's just no room for a brick and mortar, you know? In Ontario brick and we only have New Egg and Canada computers. You have a New Egg store? Yeah, after Radio Shack went under, there's only Best Buy here. Yeah, we lost our micro center years ago, like like 10 or 11 years ago. You don't see Best Buy lasting much longer? Well, I mean, I'm glad you brought it up because Best Buy, I don't think they're going under anytime soon because they're making money hand over fist with their new tech, was it tech radar? No, tech, tech, to total tech program, which costs $200. Okay, hold on. Let me pull up, let me pull the site here. The site shows my address for some reason, even in, even in incognito. So let me just pull it up real quick so I can scroll down to the relevant part. <sighs> are you gonna show me, are you gonna show where I live yet? Okay, no, good. So it's $199. 
and you get free Geek Squad tech support available 27, 24, 7, 365, up to 24 months of product protect protection with an active membership, free delivery and installation, VIP access, access to dedicated phone and chat teams, access to exclusive total tech member prices, free two day shipping, extended 60 day return, everyday savings, blah, 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 blah. Uh, <laughs> and the part we want to focus on is this access to exclusive total tech member prices. Now this is a $200 a year membership. All right. And <laughs> this membership includes all these things, including this, but the, what they do is they put items behind this lock, this, this gate. Uh, like for example, as somebody already mentioned, uh, the PS five also Nvidia cards, uh, you, in some cases, have to purchase the $199 yearly annual service uh, in order to buy uh, the, the, the privilege of purchasing from Best Buy a video card. And there's actually, I, I wish I saved the tweet, but there was a tweet um, where somebody actually showed a screenshot showing where they try to purchase a card and then it's like, whoa, you got to buy this if you're going to get it. Uh, subscription culture is just too much. Indeed. Prices is another word for anything in the store that sells uh, that more than one person would want to buy. Um, for the record, Radio Shack did not have this shit. It's true. They did not. Um, they just have installation in quotes with a star. I'm oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Paul's in your mouth, Avenue. I uh, say that should, that should count as price gouging on cards and PS5s. Indeed. Indeed. If I managed to get a 3080, no one else would be installing that unicorn. Yeah. <laughs> but <clears throat> still, pretty shitty practices. This also falls in line with how Newegg does things. Again, this is another nail in the Newegg coffin. We're trying to pull them out. We don't want them to go under, but they're also not helping when they take hyper popular items and high demand items like video cards and they bundle them up with motherboards or other things that people don't necessarily need the problem is if you don't bundle them up with other things or you don't put some kind of gate or some kind of way to protect you know the product and make it so it's not purchasable in bulk uh then you end up having people pick picking up hundreds of them reselling them scalping whatever uh or using them to mine some kind of coin that they're gonna shill and then pump and dump and then that's it move on to the next coin so there's <clears throat> there, there, there's just so much surrounding fucking cards, fucking cards. New egg are beating those nails in the coffin down with crowbars. Keep, we keep giving them. We're trying to help them, man. <laughs> so yeah, if you're looking to get a video card, I mean, I got lucky. There happened to be one on, on Amazon. Happened to be one on Amazon. And I was able to pick it up. It's a 3060. It wasn't even, it's not like a 3080 TI or anything. That's 3060 TI, 3060 TI. That makes it better. It's a Texas Instruments model, just like the calculators, just like the video games. You just want one card. I know. I know. My 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 nineteen or nineteen ninety seven. My that's what it feels like. My two thousand and seventeen five year old nine eighty Ti. Time to retire. Time to retire. Speaking of retiring. I forgot to grab a link. Hold on a second. Speaking of retiring, if you are the proud owner of a Nintendo Wii U or a Nintendo DS system, I've got some news for you. Your shop is closing down. All those Digital games that you used to be able to buy online, gone. It says here, as of May 23rd, 2022, it will no longer be possible to use a credit card to add funds to the account on Nintendo Wii Shop on Wii U or the Nintendo 3DS family of systems. On August 29th, 2022, uh, it says 
Was it 2020? I'm not done reading yet. Hold on a second, Cheryl. Hold on a second, Cheryl. As of August 29th, 2022, it will no longer be possible to use Nintendo eShop cards to add funds to an account uh, in Nintendo, e Nintendo eShop or Wii U or Nintendo 3DS, blah, 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 blah. But you can link your account and add funds that way to purchase up through March 2023, at which point they're going to be cutting. They're going to be cutting the cord, and that's it. Um, you have unlocked 3DS. You can just download ROMs, luckily. Well, not that anyone else should do that, but that seems to be the only way to really play games that you used to play growing up on Nintendo. And eventually, it'll be the only way we could play on Switch games. <laughs> like, people are going to be pirating copies of uh, Animal Crossing New Leaf or whatever. New Horizons, New Horizons. New Leaf, New Horizons. There's always something new with these guys. Uh, so... <laughs> It's a little upsetting to me because I am somebody who has, I have a Wii, I have a Wii U, I have a Switch, I have, um, uh, we have a three, a 2DS, Declan has a 2DS. Uh, we have like all of these old like Nintendo systems and they're just like systematically being inaccess made them inaccessible. So what do we do with the Wii when the shop closed down? With the Wii, uh, we just put homebrew on it. And that solves that solved everything. With the Wii U, we don't really use it that much, but frankly, we'll probably put we'll probably put a uh, um, put a homebrew on that too. Like that's that's kind of like your only choice right now with with those old consoles. If you want to use them to play games, is to set them up in a way that would allow you to do that. Uh, homebrew is very easy to set up. You do that with every old Nintendo system, but isn't it fucking stupid that you have to? Isn't it just absolutely insane that you have to? Look at this video. Watch this video with me. Excuse me, sir. I do believe I would like to purchase one Game Boy game. It's no longer possible to make Nintendo eShop purchases for Wii U and 3DS. What? But I'm willing to pay you. Yeah. Nope, no purchases allowed. I'm trying to be a good paying customer. Why not put the games on Switch? They aren't available on Switch. Don't you have a Switch eShop? Yep. So you could make your legacy content available there at any time? Yep. I'd like to purchase those games on the eShop with my money, without resorting to piracy, which you so thoroughly despise. So you should make them available for Switch. That makes sense to me. Then do it. We currently have no plans to offer classic content in other ways and also don't pirate our games. <laughs> we'll just leave that up. Uh... <laughs> I love some of the comments though. Nintendo's already doing their digital scarcity things before NFTs. Yep. You don't need to sell games when you can just sue ROM sites. Yep. <sighs> Nintendo is the only pure gaming company still making consoles. I just, they just, oh, man, they really do go balls deep on like keeping people from making content about their games. They go balls deep on people making fan versions of their games. They complete revamps. It has nothing to do with the original story. Sometimes hardly any original assets. Um, it's just ridiculous that they're so protective of everything that they do, everything that they have in their little ecosystem, that they're not allowing us to have access to those things. Similar to the Disney Vault. That's a great, that's a great example. Like, f making just fake scarcity right just generating scarcity to uh, to, uh, to raise value perceive perceived value uh by putting movies in the vault whatever that means um and then uh, so what is this uh there's the marketing uh through free content i'm sorry marketing is only done tv ads the nintendo executive exactly let's say it gone uh maybe nintendo fear becoming a sega hey, I mean, Sega's got its own issues, right? There's a number of reasons why Sega probably didn't do too well. Uh, I could also I could point the fingers at how easy it was to pirate games on Dreamcast. Not that I ever did it. But I may have known people that did. Um, Japan has different rules for uh, for IP. It's BS, but sadly, so those are those are JP rules. Yeah, we talked about that in front of. We haven't talked about it on here yet, I don't think. But um, yeah, Nintendo's buttload. Yeah, they have buttloads of money. 
but like just fucking give it to us look they really 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 need to do something because let's take a look right now this is a right now thing okay on ebay if you want to buy fire emblem for the wii you um or for the wii you got to pay these are these are completed listings completed meaning that this is what a person paid for this for this game that used to cost 50 bucks $134, $80. That's okay. That's a collection, doesn't count. $105, uh, $86. Eight, it seems like $86 is kind of the going rate for this. And it's because that's the only way to get these games because you cannot download them anymore. It's the Wii. You can't download them anymore. You can't, I mean, they're just not accessible anymore. They don't make them. They're out of print, of course, which is fine. They're years old and all that. But you don't see games at GameStop that are $86. But this kind of digital scarcity exists because Nintendo is so is so strict with the way that they want to. I don't know. They just they just they they just ditch shit. And I they I just want them to make the shit available. Just 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 host it somewhere or rehost it. Our accounts are all linked. I have a Nintendo Life or whatever account. It's all fucking linked. They know what games I'm playing on all these different platforms. I can access it all online. That means they know what I'm purchasing on all these platforms. Fucking duper duper. Let me fucking buy it. It's crazy. Or let others pay them to host it. Something. Something. But not, but not. Instead, you're going to have a bunch of third parties out here making hundreds of dollars. Sell, reselling old games. When they could be making bank. Making bank off this shit. People buy into the nostalgia all the time. All the time. So I bought Nintendo product forever. It seems to come in out and you don't get it on release. It becomes hard to find in no time. I just thought that with the Switch that they would do a better job with being able to redownload old games. Such a letdown. Meanwhile, I saw an example given about how uh, you could still, I guess you could still buy games on the Xbox 360 uh, or still at least download them, you know, 10, 12 years after the fact. I don't know when the 360 came out. <laughs> Probably longer than that. Uh, you could still buy Half-Life 1 on Steam, right? It's like, oh, that's on PC. It's like, but still, they make them available. It still works, you know? It's crazy. It's fucking crazy. Uh, another Japanese company, Square Enix, are hopeful about pricing their old games on Steam. Nearly the cost of a brand new release, 20 plus year old SNES games. Yeah. Oh, 40, yeah, 40 plus. Yeah. Yeah. Well, oh, 40 plus? Which ones? Which ones? Let's not, let's not get ahead of ourselves here, Inferno. Which games? No, no SNES 40 years. That's a stretch. Y'all y'all bad at math. Killing me right now. Kill me right now. Make make <gasps> But what they did do, what they did do for us though, if you go if you go to the original tweet where they're like, oh, we're gonna be we're gonna be like shutting all this shit down, but you could go here and relive some of your memories. Wow, look, I got this old 3DS stuff. This is actually Declan. 391 hours played, 257 hours played in Animal Crossing New Animal Crossing New Leaf. That's in the the pixel editor, like making like custom pixel art. That's all he did in that game. He still has a fucking tent after 300 257 hours. It's crazy. Anyways, this is your consolation prize. <laughs> That's your consolation prize. This is a, what is it? They will wait a few years and release a classic console version with shit games no one played. And then they're going to be poorly emulated. That's the, that's the other problem. It's not like they don't have the money in, the, to, in order to do the R&D in order to make a good emulator work on the Switch. Other third parties have done it successfully. So it, it shouldn't be a problem. It's JPEG. Actually, it was a PNG. Okay? Okay? Before we get carried away. All right, it was a PNG, not quite as lossy. Mm -hmm. Oh shit! Oh shit! Is there an alpha channel? <laughs> Whoa! They will steal their own ROMs. Yeah, they did do that at one point in time, fucking years ago. Years ago, they use they use their own fuck. Oh no, no no no! They did it recently actually. They did. That's right with um. Was it Mario 64? They did it recently where somebody found they were using like a ROM or something like that. Um, oh my God, I can't. 30 plus year old, thank you. Thank you. Ugh. Anyways. Maybe I'll start selling NFTs in the box there for the memories. Um, oh yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Every new console, Nintendo console has the same ROMs for $12 each. Every Nintendo console has the same ROMs for $12 each? What? 
Speaking of companies making poor decisions. Xfire is a news site now. Wasn't really the topic of this segment, but like wh what happened? How'd this happen? <laughs> it's a this it's a full it's a full on news site and they have a lot of, they have a lot of news like they're they're staying on top of it. There's a lot of shit here. Like this is not you know, I mean, I don't know the quality of all the writing and everything, but still, it's here. And I mean, TVs, movies, game guides, they have game guides. I mean, what do we have here? Uh top builds for Sh Shen and Genshin Impact. So look, if you play Genshin, oh, look at this. Look at this. All kinds of stuff. We got guide writers and shit. Dang. Full on guides, man. What year is it? What was I looking at before? Oh, yeah. We're looking at this. Crazy. Would you buy a new Sega console? I would. So why, why don't they do it? A new classic Sega console? I know. Well, um, uh, that, that, anyways. Uh, we got to move on. As far as I try to be the new Prima. Prima. As far as it looks a lot better than game. Looks a lot, like a better game breaker. What the boy? You're probably right. You're probably right. Just top ten Jessica Nigiri gifts. Jessica Nigiri in a in a in a, in a f fucking horse head shaking her boobies. Headline: Destiny racist question mark because if it's a question, then you can't get in trouble. There were some decisions made there that I wasn't necessarily a fan of, I guess, but. EA <laughs> acknowledges <laughs> Battlefield 2042 failure. So what what EA said internally, internal meeting, they said that they're talking about um, the reasons why Battlefield 2042 failed. Um, they said the Frostbite version they were on, their own engine, the Frostbite version they were on was too old. They had to go back and redo a bunch of stuff, which basically made it like a whole new engine. I get it, right? You got an aging engine. You got to go back. You got to plug a bunch of shit in, make a bunch of modifications and shit to make it work, right? Okay, that's one reason, sure. And it says they add you add in a global pandemic halfway into the project where the game teams had to work from home. We ended up with more new variables in development than we have ever experienced before. One of those variables maybe was that we couldn't make people crunch as hard because we didn't have these middle managers there to tell them that their lives mean nothing unless they are here crunching from six o'clock in the morning until 10 o'clock at night. There is nothing else that you need outside of your job. When was Frostbite ever good? There's probably a couple. There's just some good. It's not total. It's not all bad. It's all bad. Frost has been a disaster for the last decade. You need to cut and run. Okay, well, maybe it's been okay. It's not all, it's not all bad. It was never good. Okay, it's fair. Um, <laughs> and then it says, one final and very funny reason that they gave was that Halo Infinite, a game that is, that is not Battlefield 2042, they said that it came out around the same time and apparently created a comparison for multiplayer shooter fans that was not favorable because Halo Infinite was a very polished title, whereas Battlefield 2042 contained bugs and wasn't as polished. That's a quote. That's an actual quote, okay? Quotes was not favorable because Halo Infinite was very was a very polished title, whereas Battlefield 2042 contained bugs and wasn't as polished. So internally, <laughs> internally, they're like, wow, man, they just put out a game that wasn't trash. What are we doing? <laughs> They blame the competition. They blame everybody. But they acknowledge that, you know, it sucks. And so, like, it's like, that's cool. You acknowledge it sucks. Does that mean they're going to be able to fix it? Or are they going to abandon it? I'm betting because we're over, we're over. I mean, I don't remember there being any hype around Battlefield 2042 anyways. And I'm somebody who said a long time ago that I would play the next version of Battlefield. Well, I guess it was 2142 that I played, right? The old one? I don't know. Uh, I was like, I'll play the next one of that. But but then this came out and I didn't. So just didn't even hear about it. Been, was Battlefield ever that, ever that good? Yeah, the, the original 
futuristic battlefield shooter was good. It's 2142, if I believe. I played it in like uh, 2005. Uh, two, I don't know. I don't know how long ago. A long time ago, I think. Um, was it 2011? No, no, no. The, the only good Battlefield for you was Heroes. It's like uh, Battlefield 2, Bad Company 2 was great. It's like riding nostalgia down a hill, every new Battlefield game for you. Um, the Futurist, well, yeah, Futuristic 1 was really good. I think it was Battlefield 2142. Uh, it's an older game, of course, but but yeah, this one just wasn't very good. And they're acknowledging that it wasn't very good. Of course, they're blaming it on mitigating factors that they should be able to control. Uh, obviously, the pandemic thing, oh, that throws a wrench in things, but studies have shown that people are more productive working from home. So to me, that just translates into them not being able to push crunch on people as effectively as they were able to before um, with people actually being in office. Because I mean, everybody, everywhere, everywhere, everyone's more productive working from home because you could just roll your ass out of bed and go to work and you enjoy it because you're just rolling and just going to work. That's it. I know that everybody has the luxury of doing that, but we're talking about a company where everyone was doing that. You're not more productive? Well, maybe you're not. Or maybe what you think is not productive actually is more productive than you were at the office. Working from home is great. No pants, that's right. Hey, we need a crunch. Yeah, but I'm at home and I'm not going to do that. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, but I'm at home and... Uh, yeah, I'm not going to do that. So... Uh, yeah. How dare they complain about 20 hour days? The bed is right there. What are they thinking? What are they thinking? They say some more realistic release schedules to avoid crunch altogether. They can't. They just can't. They can, but they can't. They really can't, but they can, but they can't. They also won't. They can though, but they can't, but they can't. They just don't want to. Exactly. Exactly. So they won't. <laughs> anyway, anyways, my brain. <sighs> Activision CEO Bobby Kotick Kotick has a second secret company that spent big money to back GOP campaigns. Now, before we get started, I don't give a fuck if it's donating to GOP campaigns or Democratic campaigns. Okay, I, I, get, I care a little bit, right? Like maybe I maybe I wouldn't be so upset, right? Because I because I don't feel like that's kind of I feel like that's the bad guy, but I understand it's politics. Everyone's the bad guy. But listen, he set up a shady second account. He says, or had rather, his representative says that he gives evenly between Democratic and Republican. What this. this the numbers point pretty heavily, especially when you factor in $500,000 worth of donations to a super PAC uh, run by Mitch McConnell. That means to me, that's probably who you're rooting for. Um, a super PAC for people who don't know, uh, uh, a, a PAC is a basically a bank where you throw money in, where donators throw money in, and that money can be pulled out for uh, advertising, for campaigning, for whatever. And a super PAC is basically like a, a conglomerate of a whole bunch of these, um, uh, uh, of these, uh, I, don't even, I, don't even, I, I don't even know how to explain it actually. <laughs> but basically it's a bunch of PACs uh, or a large PAC that you can use, that you can use to spend on a number of different candidates, right? Um, so in my opinion, those should not exist. Like so much corruption could be, can be drawn right back to a super PAC or money spent for campaign money and all that shit. Okay. Well, money out of the super PAC, please. So I could use it. Yeah, exactly. A super PAC is a pack that is super. Got it. Yeah. There you go. It's a big pack. <laughs> Corporations have feelings too. Yeah. This, this is right up there with me, uh, uh, with, senators and congressmen and other legislatures being able to trade stocks on the market after they're able to also vote and manipulate the market maybe not manipulates the word but they can adjust the market through the policies that they pass right no sitting politician or elected politician should have any any money in the market 
nor should their spouses, nor should their secret fucking companies, right? Now, I know it's not the same. He's, he's civilian. He's allowed to do what he wants, but I still feel like this shit doesn't belong. Mad conflict of interest. Exactly. Manipulate is most definitely the word for it. Okay. Yeah. So, so yeah, Bobby's donating through a secret company. Nothing's going to happen. Nothing happens to these things. It's fine. It's totally legal. It's totally legal. We're just pointing it out because it's like, of course, of course, two bad things, Bobby and Super PACs together as one. Jimmy Carter gave up his beloved farm to avoid appearance of doing. That's right. That's right. He did. That's right. He did. That's like, that's like, that's like the, the, the go-to, the go-to for that one. That's right. Yeah. I heard that a bunch of times. Every time something brought up like Trump and his towers or whatever, it was like, motherfucker, what the fuck? You gave up a farm, son. Uh, do we even know what is legal? Anything that has money or influenced by money is legal. Um, there is a bill on the floor to stop this uh, that is bipartisan. Yes, there is a bill. It was presented before, not the bill, but it was brought up before and it was squashed. Uh, it was squashed in, it, it verbally. I think Nancy Pelosi said something along the lines of, uh, of uh, that every person, every American should be able to use a stock market. And fuck Nancy Pelosi. Like, no, bitch. No, bitch. You're in charge of making the policies and influencing the market. You don't get to fucking have your money in it too. All right. And that goes for every motherfucking politician. No. Fucking stupid. And so when you see that these people that we ire, we do not like Bobby, right? We do not like Bobby. And to see that he's got his hand in politics too, clearly not just because he's buddies with Mitch, right? It's because he benefits from this stuff. And so these people get the, they get the power, they get the money, they use that money to get more power, they use that, that power to get more money, and they put that money back into the power, and it just keeps a cycle, it just keeps continuing. Uh, I can see Bobby's face in the mirror and that shit eating grin. Can you fucking see it? Can you not look it? See? Yeah. You can't, you can't not see it. It's fucking shit. Look at this guy. Um, people who pick sides, apologies are dumb. They're all out to screw us. Well, some of, some of them are trying to screw us in ways we don't want to be screwed. Right? Like I prefer lube. Okay. Maybe it's me. I prefer lube. Anyways. Bobby's got other problems, as we know. Update on the uh, the sexual harassment investigation that was going on at Blizzard. This is a huge, 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 huge case. Um, and it says the, DF the DFEH uh, and the SEC are expanding their investigation. What they're doing is... Um, what they're doing is taking their... Fuck, it's on my sorry. Uh, <laughs> they are expanding into... Uh, local police departments for filings that were made from employees, from former employees. Um, it says here that act is Activision's comment. It says the DFEH is requesting sensitive confidential information with no limits or relevant scope from Southern California police departments. This serves no legitimate purpose. It represents yet another questionable tactic on DFEH's broader effort to derail uh, Activision Blizzard's settlement with the EEOC rather than protecting California's workers. The DFEH is imp impeding the meaningful progress of Activision Blizzard and delaying compensation uh, to infected employees. So they're mad because they're like, well, no, they don't need that stuff. It's, 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 it's kind of, it's, it's kind of taking a step. They're just going a little bit too far with it. You should probably stop. Look at them. They're going too far. Please stop. Please stop. <laughs> because they're probably going to find something just to add to the pile. And all of this is happening, of course, as I mentioned here, as Microsoft Activision Blizzard worked to finalize their acquisition deal. <laughs> just inherit that problem, man. Just inherit that problem. So yeah, they're mad. They're like, you're like, oh man, we don't need these guys. Like, you know, there's no need to go in there and let's start digging around. You guys can stop digging around. Just let us pay this money and pay it out, right? And then on the back end, where they're like, we're trying, we're trying to have mean meaningful progression. What they say? It says the DFEH is impeding the meaningful progress of Activision Blizzard. The meaningful progress, like, like this message from uh, the QAVP, where they are discouraging, uh, maybe not in so many words. But they're discouraging, or so few words, discouraging people from signing up uh, to make, uh, to form a union. Uh, there is a, a full, here's actual post. This was in their Slack. They posted in Slack of all things. Uh, and it goes through 
Hey everyone, wanted to give some information related to what's going on at Raven, blah, blah, blah. Uh, that impacts QA here. Feel free to also send me questions and blah, 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 blah. Um, this, 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 this is the world profits with progress. So all this discussion about union stuff here, a couple of highlights. It says, um, do, 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 do. there's no way for me to highlight this thing. I should have done that ahead of time. Unit does not help. Okay, here we go. Uh, job security here. ABK rests with our ability to produce epic entertainment for our fans. A union doesn't do anything to help us produce world class games, and the bargaining process is not typically quick, often reduces flexibility, and can be adversarial and lead to negative publicity. All of this could hurt our ability to continue creating great games. While many union contracts include a just cause provision and a grievance process, this is really just a different way to deal with disciplinary issues. Even union contracts contracts with just cause and grievance procedures will allow will still allow companies to enforce disciplinary rules. So they're saying that you don't really need a union. You don't really need a you don't really need a union because it's not going to help us. It's not going to help us make epic games. Because we like to work our people like fucking slaves. I don't know. Like why? Why doesn't it help you make it? I, I, they're saying that whenever they want to like switch gears or pivot that they can't bring the people with them because they have to deal with the union board, right? But I feel like the union board, you don't need a union slave. I feel like the union board is also on board with a, having a successful company because otherwise the union will not exist. So they want to go ahead and continue to uh, allow the company to flourish, whatever that is. So it would be in their best interest to at least negotiate in a way that would help the company succeed so that way their employees can remain employed. Typically, that's how unions are supposed to work. Now, in some situations, unions can be detrimental depending on where they're at uh, or how they're how they're trying to influence things. Uh, I've spoken out against certain unions here in the Bay Area, uh, specifically the Department of Transportation, whatever it is, the BART union, because whenever they want more money, they get a shitload of money. They have really good salary. OK, uh, but whenever they want more money and they go to negotiate, they typically threaten to shut everything down. And it's sometimes they have done it and they've had to bring out the buses to bus people around the Bay Area. So in situations like this where you can literally gridlock a multi trillion dollar you know, area of the United States uh, because you're trying to negotiate a one percent fucking raise like that shit is damaging. Right. In this case here, for me, I feel like this is something that they, sh they should be allowed to do uh, because it gives them flexibility in the workplace. That's not going to, if things lock up, it's not going to be detrimental to people on the outside. Maybe their game doesn't get delivered in time because they negotiated down crunch <laughs> and negotiated up proper planning. So to be fair, actually dealing with issues is a different way of dealing with issues. Stop trying to get bargaining power, please. Exactly. Honestly, this type of news bur bur bums me out. I just don't know how to fight against these corpos. Ah, <sighs> man. It's true. Like, it's a lot. There's a lot of negativity in some of these things. Uh, we want the best for these people, right? And when we're fighting for the best for somebody, that means we usually have to present the worst in somebody else. And so when we're talking about Blizzard, and their employees. We want their employees to be able to unionize. We want them to have some kind of power. We want them not to be laid off on a whim uh, after record after reporting record profits. And so, in order to do that, we have to bring up these things, right? We have to shit on them for this. It's our job um, for the betterment of some individuals or the greater the greater individuals. We want to support the people who are working there, not necessarily people like Bobby who are just throwing five hundred thousand dollars towards their favorite politician because they can. Humans have the right to be treated like human beings, not labor units. Well, some people don't believe that. And that's why we got to do this. That's why we got to do this shit. What I find amusing, though, is the reactions to this. Boop, boop, boop. If we zoom all the way in and then enhance this right here is really hard to say. See, but it says Fucking unionize in the Activision Blizzard font. So I love that in their official Slack, somehow they have a fucking unionized <laughs> emote. 
And of course, there's a couple other good ones here. Obviously, the down, right? Uh, the you. I'm not quite sure what the U means. There's the doubt. There's the no. It's the it's the children that are wrong. Simpsons quote. So I, I'm glad that there's like some. Res oh, you union system. Oh, duh, duh. Of course. Thank you. Um, I love that there's still some people like you know willing because I mean when you click on that your name's on it, right? Fucking do it. Fuck yeah, do it. But if Blizzard is going to keep pushing against unionizing, then we got to keep bringing the shit up. We got to keep bringing it up. Um, that's the pathetic. Pathetic? I thought that was, no, the children must be wrong. The, the, the children are the ones that are wrong. Damn, maybe it is pathetic. Um, so weird to see a, uh, see a post from an administration with down votes. Well, they posted it in a channel that had no responses. Or sorry, so did not allow responses. So people had to react somehow. <sighs> Or don't buy their games. Or don't buy their games. Yeah, or don't buy their games. Absolutely. That is, that is totally an option. 50%? Um, what the heck? Is this the zoom out? Wow, this is a big-ass... Moving on. Well, kind of. It is indeed pathetic. Oh, you got it. Oh, it is the pathetic one. Oh, man. Dang, you got me. Oh, my meme skills gone. It was just high. Man, I tried to enhance it, man. I'm sorry. <sighs> Anyways, I got both of you guys dropping at the same time. Jeez. Mm -mm. No, it's the streamer that must be wrong. <laughs> so we talked a little bit about, we talked a little bit a couple weeks ago about this little acquisition that happened uh, between Microsoft and Activision, right? And did we mention... I can't remember if we did or not, but one of our elected officials sits on a, a, a board, a committee where they're tasked with investigating major mergers, acquisitions and all that, just to make sure they're not breaking any monopoly uh, laws or any other, you know, enterprise laws or industry laws or whatever, their policies, uh, just to make sure this shit is, um, is going smooth. It wasn't Jamie Raskin. It was some. It was someone else that I that I had in the article. But but it could be. But but Jamie Raskin was a part of it. Um, anyway, so so uh, Microsoft sees this and they're going a little bit on the offensive, uh, offensive in a uh, in a charming way, to say that hey, if we incorporate games from Activision Blizzard, a company that we now own, we will not give them preferential treatment on our store so they're trying to like just to get ahead of the curve a little bit before people start digging and saying well you could do this or that or whatever they're trying to get in real quick and say whoa 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 we're gonna make sure that they're not gonna get preferential treatment period uh and so that's them a charm a charm offensive you might say that what that what that's right that's what it was that was that that was the headline that i read and so yeah, this is it's a good it's a good approach for them if they wanna if they wanna make sure that nothing happens here personally. And I think I said this last time. I don't think that anything's gonna happen, like in terms of like breaking up this merger. I think this is gonna go through no matter what. And I think that uh, after the fact, Bobby is probably gonna split because he has no use here um, at, at Microsoft, and he'll probably go and head up some other thing. I don't know, like murdering babies or some shit. Uh, so let's say now they are buying Steam as well. This will go through. I heard that rumor but it was did you wait is that from a rumor you heard i heard that i heard that somebody somebody was saying microsoft was planning on buying something else and i was like that's not happening oh no no what no it wasn't a rumor i just mean steam is a monopoly oh yeah 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 that's true that's true that's true that's true 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 yeah yeah and steam isn't gonna i don't I hope that <laughs> was on the phone with gabe earlier <laughs> It's all antitrust. You buy your competition and then and have nothing to compete with. Yeah. Um, God, wasn't there another company that that Microsoft bought? Another game dev company they bought, and then they said they were no longer going to be making games for PlayStation. But that that seemed like a dirty headline. I didn't read into, so I don't want to. I don't want to necessarily like dig too deep into that right now. But um, it was it was a former company that they had purchased, and they're no longer making games for PlayStation. Um, anyways. The interview from Platinum certainly made it seem like they are in talks with uh, with Microsoft. Oh, there's a Capcom countdown. Some people on Twitter were saying it was going to be an acquisition. Can you link that countdown? I thought I had that. I think I I think I saw that earlier. Um, 
Anyway, so uh, Microsoft's trying to get ahead of the game a little bit. Trying to get ahead of the game, let people know, hey, we're going to try to approach this as fairly as possible. Um, it's almost 100% for Street Fighter Six. Oh, yeah, maybe. Maybe. I thought it was going to be for NFTs. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, I, I did retweet that, and I didn't save the tweet. I should have saved it. Uh, yeah, I was like, oh, they're going to be a Mega Man uh, bosses, like Cutman and, and uh, Metal Man and Bubble Man, all that. But they're going to be, you know, randomly generated for PFPs. They're going to sell them as NFTs. That was my, like, you know, cursed opinion of it. <laughs> uh, the counter looks more like REA or SF6 announced. Okay, fine. Damn it. All those old arguments about WoW versus ESO seem kind of silly with Microsoft owning both. Who saw that coming? Yep. Uh, yep. There it is. The, the countdown. All right. Thank you. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Uh, how much time is left? Two days. Dang. It does feel a little Resident Evil-y. But, or, not Resident Evil. Well, kind of. But we just had a Resident Evil game. The last day of the Capcom Cup. Ooh, okay. All right, so it, it, it's concurrent with, okay, okay. So at the end of the event, then we'll get something. What is that? It's going to be a Sunday night, something like that. Interesting, interesting. Euro Clock Simulator. <laughs> so, moving on. Sunday midnight EST, 9 p.m. on Sunday. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Uh, we do have a movie, uh, another video game movie that is in the works. Early, early, early. We don't know who's going to be uh, in it. We don't know who is going to be directing. We don't have any producers. All we have is Netflix partnering with take two to bring bioshock to the big screens or to the netflix streams if anything to the big streams so that's what we'll, that's what we'll say a bioshock movie how does that make you feel how does that make you feel meh you're into it all right all right uh, indifferent, fair, fair, should be late because more horror in my life. They're going to say meh, uh-oh, shrug, dirty, the little sisters better be freaky, okay. I'm not really in the Bioshock world, so no feel, okay, 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 someone's got to fuck it up, someone got to fuck it up, there, that's a great, oh, that's, that's, a, that's a great <laughs> approach, <laughs> well, someone's got to fuck it up, Bioshock universe, fucking amazing, libertarian bullshit pass, <laughs> Cautiously optimistic. I want it. Nope. Too freaky. Okay. Up top. What the fuck? So we don't have nothing. We don't have anything. We have nothing on this. All we have is that there's a deal. And then after this, we're going to get casting and then we'll get story and then we'll get all that. And then we'll get shooting. Then we'll get behind the scenes. Then we'll get a teaser. Then we'll get a trailer. Then we'll get a release. And then we'll see. Is Tim Burton going to direct? You see... That's the kind of stuff I would like to see. I would like to see if we're going to make a Bioshock movie, put in somebody who specializes in some element that would make sense. Tim Burton for visuals, right? Uh, if it's an action movie, get someone like Michael Bay. It doesn't have to be Michael Bay, right? <laughs> if it's if it's a if it's a comedy, get Edgar Wright. You know, like there's there's a number of different. Uh, or or Taika Waititi, right? There's a number of different uh, uh, producers and all that that can bring these types of stories to life. But fuck, Tommy Wiseau, <laughs> Jesus Christ, Peter Jackson. Let's just make this a quintilogy. The League Anime Netflix is good. Voiced by Chris Pratt. Fucking hell. <sighs> Talk about the most. The most lackluster and just zero hype announcement ever was that Chris Pratt was going to be voicing Mario. And it was like, uh, <laughs> I like Chris Pratt. I don't care about his personal whatever. Right. I don't care. Uh, I like him in the movies. I just can't see him being, <laughs> I can't fucking see him doing a Mario voice. 
But it could, you know what, maybe what they're going to do, which would totally fuck it up, uh, is they're going to try to do what the new Chipmunk movie's doing, the new Chippendale movie, um, where they totally change the voices. I'm, you know, I'm willing to bet some of you guys have not seen the trailer for this. And so I'm, I'm going to go play part of it, okay? Listen to the voices. What is Chippendale this Rescue Ranger Generation. Time. Dance. No one... I'm fast forwarding. It could all come crashing down. Torn by vanity. You look different. Hey, it's no secret I had the CGI surgery done. Consumed by temptation. My love of cheese got the best of me. I just love it so much. My please. My please. Is it possible that two living legends are dead? Anyways, you heard it. It's weird. It's weird that they change their voices the movie still looks pretty good somehow okay but it's weird so when i think about chris pratt being mario <laughs> it's like well maybe they just won't do a mario like a you know, typical traditional mario accent at all maybe not at all uh the movie looks looks like it'll be corny fun you know what i thought would be corny fun the tom and jerry movie and it was not. I don't know what I was thinking. I remember watching some Tom and Jerry when I was really, really young. I remember thinking it was hilarious. And when I watched the movie, I was like, oh, Tom and Jerry are hilarious. But the rest of the movie was so cringe. It was like super fucking cringe. It was painful. Even Declan was like, Ugh. he was like, no. Yeah. Rewatch the cartoons again. They'd be dark now. What are you talking about, man? Tom and Jerry, wholesome. Uh, what they did to Tom and Jerry was a travesty. It was insulting. They already had a Tom and Jerry movie back in the 90s. What else would it be in a Tom and Jerry movie? Just they just beating the shit out of each other. They turned it into like, it was it was like a, it was like the proposal with, with uh, uh, Sandra Bullock and Ryan Reynolds, but with Tom and Jerry, I don't know, man. It was weird. And it wasn't funny. And it didn't have any charm. Uh, it was bad. Wasn't TJ all about murder practice? I don't know. Was that? See, I don't know. I, don't, I watched it. I don't fucking know. <laughs> it was just bad. The mouse is a psychopath. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Just get an action director to direct a Tom and Jerry movie? Fuck yeah. Well, how was the new Space Jam? It was probably bad, huh? Probably wasn't as good as the original. That part for sure, right? Awful. Oh man. Awful. Dang, was bad. John Cena is making a movie called Coyote vs. Acme. I might watch that. Sure, go ahead and ruin another favorite of mine. Masturbatory was the word I heard. Wow, that's a good word for it. Self flagellation, that's another word I like to use sometimes. Um <laughs> <laughs> All right. They also ruined Garfield. Fucking hell. Shrimp, by the way. Thank you. Uh, fucking hell. Jesus Christ. Well, well, in other bad news. <laughs> sorry, crime. Because <laughs> uh, I know crime. I know you were a big fan. I know you were a really big fan of Google Stadia. But you could still get it under the name Google Stream for your enterprise needs for streaming. The technology is still available. So Stadia has been downgraded. No shit. <laughs> uh, internally at Google. Um, they're not going to be seeking out AAA anything. Uh, and they're going to instead focus on the technology and pimping that out to other services. They did it with AT&T. You're able to stream uh, Batman, uh, Arkham Knight. Um and that was like a thing they did. But otherwise, it seems like, you know, they have the tech now that they're trying to just basically just license it out, white label it, whatever. Add it to the Google grave. Google Stadia already dead. Stadia has been dead, sadly. The game released or the console released and they just didn't get any exclusives. There was like, they had like hot games that were available everywhere else. So yeah, was it ever really alive? 
Maybe, maybe it's going to have a second life in another company, white labeled. Um, yeah, here you go. Thank you, Inferno. I have this up on another tab somewhere, but I'm not going to be able to find it. But yeah, this is the Killed by Google graveyard here. Um, and here you can search for any, any, I mean, you don't even have to search. Just look like there's so many things that they have killed over the years. It all started with Google Desk Bar. <laughs> Whatever that was. <sighs> Shit. <laughs> Send a phone, search match. I mean, yeah, they have a lot. Eventually, Stadia will be in here too. It needs a whole separate tab. <sighs> yeah, is Google Plus on here? Let me see. Plus. Uh, wait, is it Google Plus? I uh, see. Uh, yeah, there it is. 2011, 2019. Google Plus was an internet-based social network. It was almost eight years old. <laughs> I like how they write it out like it's a like it's an actual obituary you'd read on a, a, a on a, a a gravestone. I've held and just released an interactive game workout for the bike. Yes, and that is one of the things that's brought up that Google is talking to Peloton um, in order to support, I guess, to support that system or that game or bring more games uh, to it. Can we have the link? Killedbygoogle.com. And so, so the problem with that is that Peloton was a booming company over the pandemic and not so much now. They, I think they laid off, they laid off like a fuck ton of people and you know what they did? They laid off a fuck ton of people and then they gave them like a, 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 a year subscription to the Peloton, <laughs> to the Peloton service. So yeah, over two thousand people. Thank you, thank you. Thanks, Sex in the City. I don't know what happened on Sex in the City, but I hear something happened, and Peloton got upset about it. So maybe that's the reason why. Maybe when they have their internal meeting, and they're like, oh, "Well, it wasn't because of the bike. It was because of all these other factors. <laughs> it was because of Sex in the City ruined it." And then Mr. Big came out. He apparently is a big, big sexual harasser. Nitty muggins. I uh, see. We can't pay you anymore, but we have. Yeah, we can't pay you anymore, but have a year of our service. Exactly. You got to stay in shape when you got to find a new job. Mm -hmm. No, but the people don't even have. So many people don't even have a fucking bike. They can't even use it. <laughs> no, but that's a thing. Crime. They don't have the bike. <laughs> They're not giving them the bike. They're just giving them the service. <laughs> yes, you do have to. You have to stay in shape when you try to find a job. Oh, Lord, 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 man, I should, man, crime, I, I, crime, you got me thinking, I should squeeze in some good news in here sometimes, some good news, anybody got some good news we can squeeze in at the last second, damn, jeez, let me, hold, let me, let me go to the, let me go to the good news site, let me look, surely there's something on the other place where I always go to find some good positive news here, um, here we go, hey, here we go, here we go, ah, perfect, Hundreds of sealed retro 90s games that were just publicly revealed could be worth a million bucks. Hey, that's great. Top Every Day is going live soon. That's good news also. You're getting ice cream on Sunday? Hey, that's awesome. I'm going camping. That's also good news. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, they saw a bunch of growth because people were stuck at home. That's right. And so all the expansion came production they invested wasn't needed. Boom, boom, ba boom, boom. What is that? Wait, you're the second British person that I've seen post this. Wait, 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 we got we got to finish up the news. Hold on a second. Shh. Peacemaker's getting another season. That's right. Peacemaker. Millennium Dome? Super Dome? Which dome? Where? Why am I British people's posting this? The O? That's O2 Stadium in London. It doesn't look like it's in good shape. That doesn't look right. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't look like it. what is it what's the dome do it's supposed to be dome e in shape and it's not doing it um oh it had the best came at the end i haven't i haven't watched the end i haven't watched the end of peacemaker yet so so oh you have a major storm oh shit okay well 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 no spoilers no spoilers no spoilers anyways we gotta finish the news thank you so much for watching my name is mike b chat Ch oh this side chat sunday Ah. Thank you so much for hanging out. I'm going to stop recording now. And we're going to find out what happened with this dome.
We're gonna look into this. We're gonna do some investigative journalism. All right. Thanks for watching. Oh, I gotta fix my eyebrows. I got like one of those wild hairs, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I do though. It's like, it's like, I got like three of them are like, wow, they go like this at the end. I have to trim them all the time. It's fucking weird. Let's do some news.